Hey guys, this is Rainy Knight from OsaSimply.com, and today's article is for all the mamas out there that are about to hire a nanny and go back to work, or all of the nannies that have a baby that's bottle feeding and having a little bit of a challenge. The transition to bottles can be really tough. The need to use a bottle can arise in a few situations. Maybe mom has low production and needs to supplement with formula. Perhaps baby has started teething, making breastfeeding uncomfortable for mom. How does this transition relate to nannying though? Well, when mom goes back to work and hires a nanny, is it reasonable for mom to have to leave work early to make sure baby has food? In any situation, introducing bottles can be challenging, but it's necessary. Using bottles doesn't mean that you can't continue breastfeeding when you get home. In fact, it's better to do both when you're first starting. Let's talk about a few tricks to start bottle feeding. First of all, when should you start? To prevent complications, this preparation should start four to six weeks after baby is born. Do this with each baby you have. Every baby is different and may transition at a different rate. First, it's important to remember to simulate breastfeeding. The goal is to make eating from a bottle as close to breastfeeding as possible, since it's already familiar and comforting. Try bottle feeding about one hour after baby has breastfed so they are hungry but not starving. This will help eliminate frustration for the baby if they struggle to get the hang of it. In the beginning, try bottle feeding once every day. Whatever feeding schedule you choose, feed with the bottle at the same time every day. This will help a ton when you go back to work. By scheduled feeding, the baby will learn that after their morning feeding with mom, they will have bottles until again before bed. While baby is attempting bottle feeding, it's best for mom to be in and stay in a different room. Mom can take this opportunity to shower, take a nap, or pump for later. It is best to pump 30 to 60 minutes after a morning breastfeeding for the most milk. Pumping in short, frequent sessions in the beginning is also great for relieving pain and starting your storage supply. This is because baby won't eat as much as your body can produce in the beginning. Pro tip, check with your insurance about which pumps they will cover before you start your research. This will help you save money and time. The Medela pump is the best one covered by most insurances in Washington. It's important to note, if you are using a bottle for formula, never mix formula with breast milk or use breast milk as a water replacement. This can cause the baby some serious discomfort. Start with prepping the milk correctly. Warm the bottle of fresh milk or frozen bag with a bottle warmer. This will keep the temperature of milk even throughout the bottle. Swirl, don't shake. This will limit the number of air bubbles in the milk, making it smoother for baby. Fewer air bubbles means less gas in the baby's tummy. Don't forget to check the temperature on your inner wrist. It should be body temperature. If it's too warm, let it sit with the top off for a bit to cool down before giving it another try. Swaddle the baby so they're nice and cozy. Hold them close, sitting them up a bit so they have to put the same amount of effort into suckling from the bottle as they do mom's breast. It's best to have someone other than mom bottle feed the baby so they only correlate mom with breastfeeding. Now go ahead and give it a try. When bottle feeding, switch sides halfway through the bottle, burping the baby in between sides. To match breastfeeding patterns, alternate which side you start on. For example, if you start feeding holding the bottle in your right hand, the next time you feed the baby, you should start by holding the bottle in your left hand. Make sure to always tell mom which side you started on and what time you started feeding so she can pump accordingly. This way, her and baby will be on the same schedule when they are reunited and you have a record of which side you started on for next time. Don't forget to cuddle baby while feeding with a bottle. Giving attention and skin-to-skin -skin contact while bottle feeding will help baby enjoy it as much as breastfeeding. If baby gets fussy, soothe them and try again. After a few times with the same bottle, if you're still having a hard time, you may want to try another brand. Don't be afraid to try different bottles. It's okay to go through a bunch of different bottles and nipples. In fact, most people do. I've had success using Dr. Brown's bottles and Komotomo bottles with the babies I work with. Also, look for a slow flow nipple. 
This will cause the baby to have to work for the milk rather than it pouring down their throat. It's important when transitioning baby from boob to bottle that you safely store and use your breast milk. Fresh breast milk can be left on the countertop for four hours, put in the fridge for four days, or put in the freezer for six to 12 months. Thawed breast milk can be left on the countertop for one to two hours, put in the fridge for 24 hours, but should not be refrozen. And leftover breast milk, in case the baby didn't finish the bottle, can only be left on the countertop for two hours. It should not be stored again in the fridge or the freezer. This information comes directly from the CDC. You can look at my safely storing breast milk table here on my blog or on my Pinterest at pinterest.com slash ossimply. Want regular updates? Subscribe to my newsletter.